All right, so I'm here with the uh, Avian 80 amp speed control and uh, doing the install here, uh, here with the 500. So the issue that I had was that, um, so a lot of these parts and pieces had been selected individually and the speed control that I had before uh, was not relating RPM data to the receiver. Uh, or battery voltage to the receiver um, it you know it, it was a different brand and it was you know it just wasn't telling the receiver uh, that data now I had a sensor hooked up for battery pack voltage and ran the sensor up front and tapped off the main battery leads um, but uh, you know obviously I had to run a separate sensor so by running the avian speed control instead uh, it will just send the rpm data and the voltage data to the 6610 without having to run any separate wires and it's obviously it's also it's sending rpm data as well which uh, will go through the 6610 and back to the dx9 so with this setup, you can get battery voltage from, from any battery with this receiver with a battery sensor, but you're not going to get RPM data, uh, real-time RPM data from the speed control back to your remote. And just wanting this to be set up, we're like, hey, if I, if I can get that information, I want it. So with that in mind, I've... Uh, picked up the avian speed control now the only other problem i have is that the battery release is under the capacitors so what i'm going to do is take a little uh plexiglass section here and cut it out so that this rpm so that the speed control sits up high enough but in the meantime i've just got it mocked up with wires and here we're going to go for the first time uh going to power it up and see if we can pull real-time rpm data out of the motor so first time power up it's already binded to the receiver so it should just power up so you plug it in uh, we've got bind indication our avian uh, uh, a cooling fan is automatically running now that came with the speed control looks like our beast x is initializing now the way that i have this set up right now there's two leads that come off of the speed control one of the leads is the uh, redundancy power circuit lead is going back to the micro beast to give that power and then the signal lead is going to the 6610 so the 6610 is sending an sr xl2 signal to the micro beast so all the channel information is going to the micro beast but it will also put out a second signal for throttle on channel one so basically all the cyclic controls are going through the sr x x uh xr uh s xr SRXL2 port of the 6610 to the side port of the MicroBeast. So there's no four lines running over here. It's all going via the SRXL out and into the side of the MicroBeast for all of the servos. And then I'm just using, like I said, the channel one output just for throttle. Now, I haven't run this. It should be calibrated. So let's go ahead and try it bring this up all right so I'm back uh, I'm here with the uh, smart ESC setup uh, unfortunately I, I had to make some changes to the configuration because some things didn't work quite the way I hoped they would uh, and so here is the problem uh, I was using the SRXL2 port to connect the receiver to the micro beast okay the problem is that uh, if you power up the system and it initializes with, with the micro beast set up on the SRXL2 port, uh, 
after that point, you can plug the ESC into the throttle channel, but uh, it won't send the data from the ESC to the uh, receiver. It, it, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work like that. You can't do SRXL2 and have the, the, this plugged in separately. Now, if we go to the ESC, if you want the smart data from the ESC, which I do, that's the goal here, uh, you've got to plug the ESC into the throttle cable channel of the receiver, okay? So, unfortunately, what that means is that you can't use the SRXL2 port to put the rest of the data up to the MicroBeast, okay? If you want to use the throttle channel, then you've got to run it like a normal receiver. Now, that's not a problem. It's not a big deal. If you run back to the menu over here, uh, you've just got to do like a standard receiver setup. So, aileron goes to aileron, elevator goes to elevator, uh, and these cables come right with the MicroBeast Plus. And then this specialized cable comes here where it's one cable for rudder, gyro, and pitch. Well, they each have only one lead. So you plug in rudder, gyro, pitch, and then you plug it into this, this channel here on the MicroBeast Plus. If you set it up that way, uh, then you, you're able to, to plug. So like in the picture for the MicroBeast, you, you're plugging in your throttle into the throttle. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It, this is the correct way to set it up. If you do a standard receiver, you plug your throttle channel not into the MicroBeast. You plug the throttle into the receiver, okay? So if you want your ESC to send the data to the receiver and the receiver to send it to the remote, you've got to set the system up this way. You can't set it up the SRXL2 way. So I had to come back here, remove this SRXL2 connector that went from the receiver up to the MicroBeast, and go back to the go back to the standard receiver configuration where I got the three lines running up and plugged into the MicroBeast. Okay, and now I've got the ESC plugged into channel one. Okay, and I've got the uh, dual redundancy power cable plugged into the MicroBeast. So the receiver is getting direct power from the BEC uh, into the receiver, and then the dual redundancy cable is taking power to the MicroBeast via this last port on the top. Um, and don't ask me how I know, but if you plug that in upside down, every time you power this up, it's going to reset the receiver. So just make sure when you plug it in, you put the negative on the bottom, which is pretty obvious. Plug it in on the top, it'll kick it into receiver bind mode every time. Now, of course, if you change from the XL, uh, SRXL2 port over here to going back to the old-fashioned way, you're going to have to go back to the receiver detection mode. You just hold this down for a minute, power it up, let off, it'll uh, come up, run through and then come up on channel A, blinking, and then you just hold this down momentarily, it'll do the receiver detection, and it will now receive, it'll now find these signals coming from here, and it will be bound to the receiver for all your cyclic inputs. Um, and now you're able to plug your smart ESC directly into your receiver, your receiver is able to send the smart ESC data back to your remote. So I'll just power it up real quick. Now, right now, the way this comes, this is an 80 amp speed control. It comes with two connectors like this. Um, I will be cutting these off and I'll just have one connector up here pretty close to the ESC and then the battery will just plug in right there like that. But just to get this going, I'm just doing it like this. So we power it up. The remote's already on. I'm going to go back to hold mode. Yeah, it's in hold mode. So there's the ESC just initialized. We have motor control right now. And the Beast, Micro Beast Plus just initialized. So we have Micro Beast control. Uh, just verify for a second time our throttle hold is on. And we'll, you'll see our... There we go, our swash plate is moving up and down. We got left, we got right, we got back, we got forward. Okay, so we've got full cyclic controls. 
we're in hold mode. We're going to go back to zero and come out of hold mode. Normal mode. Okay, so now we're in mo normal mode. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip it to audio just so you can uh, hear RPM. hear this response. So it just said zero RPM. Zero RPM, right? Now we'll raise it up. 836 RPM. So 836 RPM. 1060 RPM. Now if we go back to... I'm going to turn that off because it's obnoxious. Okay, so we're, turn the, we're going to turn the vocals off and go back to the main screen and go back to the flying screen and then go over here this is where i intend to use the rpm data so when i'm selecting a head speed for this helicopter i'm going to go to this page and look at where my rpms are for my head speed and this is how i'll know what i'm running for a head speed so if it's happy at 2300 and i like it you know then I can run it there and you know you see what kind of battery burn you get now if I think I got some room to play and I can reduce it a little bit for the type of flying that I'm doing then I can know exactly what my rpm count is uh, and I've also got my voltage I'm just gonna turn that off uh, I also have my voltage readout here and I didn't have to run any sensors at all. All that information, the RPM data and the voltage comes right out of the smart ESC. So here's the setup, all live and running. You got the smart ESC. It's uh, reading the battery data off the battery. It's sending it up to the receiver. The receiver is sending it back to the remote. Uh, the MicroBeast Plus is doing its thing up here. Now, I, this MicroBeast Plus is all set up. This helicopter has already flown. This is not set up. So what I'm going to need to do to get this tuned specifically to this helicopter is plug the program box to it, which unfortunately I don't have it for the Avian. It's, I'll have it here shortly. And then the other thing that I'll do is I will go into my computer. I'll hook this up to my computer and I will set the gear ratios for this specific helicopter uh, into the ESC. Once the specific gear ratios are set into the ESC, I will be able to then run a calibration mode where you run it at 50% and I will be able to get a head speed lock based on the exact gearing of this helicopter and I will be able to know exactly what my head speed is is running at and I'll also be able to uh, set up the governor so that it runs at whatever exact speed that I'm picking um, you know and the governor is is the big advantage so this the you know I, I really pushed to set this up because you know the governor will basically speed control your throttle um, now you say like well you can just fix your throttle in your remote that's true but that's kind of the same thing as like fixing your gas pedal in one position when torque increases on the blades uh, it's gonna vary up and down whereas if you set up the governor in the ESC it's actually gonna target a specific RPM so when you throw the helicopter into a roll or uh, a high torque scenario the ESC is going to dump more power into the motor okay now when you come out of that roll and you go into a smooth flight uh, without a governor set up in a linear curve the helicopter is going to want to kind of rise because now there's more power than needed from the throttle stick so you're constantly having to you're constantly having to raise and lower your throttle for com to compensate for different amounts of torque being put on your motor whereas if you have a governor set up in here uh, it's going to manage all that for you and you're really only going to have to control your pitch with your throttle stick uh, so that makes the helicopter a lot easier to fly and it just uh, it just operates more efficiently uh, more smoothly and uh, that's the goal here and then of course the beauty of this system is that it will feed that rpm data 
right back to the receiver, which will feed it right back to the remote. And I'll be able to tell exactly what my head speed is. So if I want a little more, you know, I can look at what the capability range is for the helicopter and I can jack it up. If I'm already at the max, then I know it's maybe some other settings I might have to change. So there it is, uh, the Avian Smart ESC, uh, the 6610 Smart Receiver, and the MicroBeast Plus all set up and working together with the remote. Uh, the telemetry all set up on the remote. All we got to do now is hook this to the programming box and hook it to the computer and tune it specifically to the gear ratios for this helicopter.